So, let's go to my next prop. And I'm going to show it to you up here on the slide, but I'm going to put it up here because we're going to come back to it a couple times. And so let me show you what they found out in these studies, and that's what those arrows are. Pretty much, if the food was 400 calories per pound or less, no matter how much you ate of it, guess what happened to your weight? It went down, even if you were a couch potato. It didn't matter. Eat all you want, you pretty much lost weight. Between four and 800 calories per pound, guess what happened? Most people, as long as you got in your typical amount of activity, you know what I mean, that you weren't a couch potato, you pretty much lost weight. The range was based on activity level. So the more active you were, the more likely you were to lose. The less active, the less likely. So it might have been kind of near the cutoff range, but for most people, if you did the basic 30 to 60 minutes a day, you still lost weight. Between 8 and 1,200 calories a pound, guess what happened? People gained weight. There was only one exception. There was only one group that didn't gain weight. You know who they were? The very active, the elite athletes. Over 1,200 calories per pound. Guess what? That's what I'm showing you up here. Guess what happened to everybody? They gained weight. Now, why is this important to you? Because in yesterday's talk, I showed you that when we did a study and we asked you what you ate, you said that one-third or one-half of your calories come from here. And that's when we asked you. And we know when we ask you that you might lie. And when we look at it, fudge, you might fudge. No, that's not a good word either. <laughs> so when we look at it other words, other ways, we know one-half to two-thirds of your calories are coming from here. So if this is where half to two-thirds of your calories are coming from, what's happening to everybody's weight? It's going up. No matter how much they're working out, if they're down at this end, correct? So you see what's happened in America? Now, if you go back 30 years ago, how many of these calorie-dense foods existed in the supermarket? Very few. So calorie density is becoming a very key concept. And just so we're going to see this a little later, but here's your breakouts, 400... 4 to 8, 8 to 12, and 12 and above. That's what you got to know. Very simple. And when they again looked at populations across the United States, here's what they found. Now they split this up between high fat and low fat, and they used 30% because when you're out in the world and you do regular studies, what do they think is the cutoff? 30. I would have chosen a different one. But look, they wanted to look at the, per the per prevalence of obesity based on the level of fat and the amount of fruits and vegetables, because what's the food's lowest in calorie density? So the people who ate the most fruits and vegetables had to have the lower calorie-dense diets. So the lowest prevalence of, prevalence of over obesity is in the low-fat diet that eats the most fruits and vegetables. And by vegetables, that also included foods like, you know, oatmeal and all those, starchy vegetables too. Interesting, isn't it? The more fat you ate and the less fruits and vegetables, look what happened to the amount of obesity. So then they took these numbers and they translated them to calorie density. What was the calorie density of their diets? And we find out the group that had the least obesity, that had the lowest fat and the highest intake of fruits and vegetables, had a calorie density of 1.22 grams calories per gram, which in English is 550 calories per pound. What did I tell you was the midpoint? Interesting, isn't it? So then at the end of last year, how many of you heard about the Food, Nutrition, Physical Activity and the Prevention of Cancer Report, A Global Perspective? Boy, that was a mouthful. <laughs> I almost needed a glass of water to get through that. Have any of you heard about it? Jesus Christ. How many of you have heard of the Atkins diet? How many of you have heard of the South Beach diet? How many of you have read the Zone diet? This is available online for free. <laughs> Please read it. You know why? It was done by the World Cancer Research Fund and the American Institute for Cancer Research. 100 scientists from 30 countries reviewed 7,000 studies for five years. This was the best of the best. And one of the first, the number one recommendation was to maintain a healthy body weight that there's a strong relationship between body weight and many cancers. 
and they came out with a recommendation. They also recommended a mostly plant food diet and that if you ate animal products, especially meat, to make it a bit like a condiment. And they gave a number to shoot for. They gave private goals, personal goals, and public health goals. And they said a public health goal is the average energy density, calorie density of diets should be lowered to 1.25 calories per gram or 555. Can we round off to 550? We all be happy. See where we're going? So here we are again. Let's put them all together. All the studies in the labs, the cancer report, the studies on the population, this is what we're saying. Somewhere in here is our goal, calorie density, that our total diet should be around 550 calories per pound or less. And if it's there, we can pretty much see what we want, never go hungry, and maintain and or lose our weight. You adjust slightly. Less is better. Here we start getting into trouble. Make sense to you? I spent a week working on that chart. Pretty cool, isn't it? That's like the best one I've made yet. I'm going to make that into a refrigerator magnet. 